What is up, MFers? So excited for today because it is finally the day that we are releasing the brand new hangover line through swim bait that we have been working on in fact the last couple of years. The line through swim bait is a uh, prototype six cents bait. We're gonna call the hangover. And crushed it. Oh, well, I think prototyping is over. New hangover swim bait, dude. The line through. Mm -hmm. First ever cast with the line through. Look at that day. I've only caught two fish in two <laughs> days, and they've both been on this freaking bait. I think it's the best line through ever. <laughs> there is a damn hangover in there somewhere. Woo. Look at that thing. Down got teeth. <laughs> Matrix sense. Line through. Lock it up. Another one for the old line through. Dude, that's the first cast, bud. <laughs> You bet. Donk, man. Absolute donk on the old hangover. What you know about that? Now, I know a lot of you guys are probably over there at sixcentsfishing.com at that link right down there below in the description, picking up as many of these as possible so you can get them before they sell out. But there's a lot of them available, guys. So I think a lot of you get your hands on these. And I can't wait for that because since I started using this bait a couple years ago, it's been the number one bait to catch giant bass for me down here in Texas and really all over the place. Today's video, I just wanted to go over exactly what my inspirations were for this bait right here. I've been a lover of soft plastic swim baits for a very long time because they catch giant bass, especially these sizes. And I wanna tell you what inspired me to put all the different features into this bait, what took so long to get it out, getting everything just right. I'm gonna to go to the pool. We're gonna show you some swim actions of these three different sizes, these three different sink rates, I should say. And um, then we're gonna just talk about the rod reel line that you guys will wanna be throwing these things on to go out and catch the biggest fish of your life. So this right here is the Six Sense Hangover Swim Bait that we have been spending years really getting everything right with this bait. The six to seven inch soft plastic swim bait has been something that is a huge part of my arsenal for such a long period of time. Back from way when I started tournament fishing and even before tournament fishing, it was a, a style of bait that always drew my attention. Back from watching the Elite Series events at Clear Lake, uh, with those guys crushing them on big huddle stands, and you watch the, the tournament with Byron Velvic, you know, winning on the, the Clear Lake hitch patterns, and Skeet Reese winning over there on the East Coast, I think it was Smith Mountain Lake, on a big bait, um, not a huge bait, six, seven inch soft plastic swim baits. That piqued my interest before then and beyond of the possibility of catching a better than average size of fish. And I'm gonna run you guys through a bunch of different baits that are we kind of dug out of the vault. It really inspired everything that um, that I used to design this bait. And those inspirations, along with all of the field testing the last three, four, five years, uh, moving down here in Texas and fishing these big fish waters and bigger tournaments, I've put all those features into this bait of exactly what I wanted. And I apologize that we kind of had to keep pushing the launch date back and everything. We wanted to make sure it was perfect. And so I'm gonna run you through the features of this bait out of the package, why some of the features are the way they are. And then I'll talk a little bit about these inspirational baits. You know, we, we talk about the last couple years of designing this bait and everything we've gone through. Here's some of the newer models of prototypes. This is once we got the tail design uh, and everything right, but these are all different harnesses. Some of them don't have harnesses at all. Some of them are in really crazy, funky, goofy colors from the factories and we were doing different color testing to see what it looked like poured versus what it looked like when it was painted. Man, we've run through so many different things because I wanted it to be perfect. I wasn't gonna put a, a line through swim bait on the market that I didn't feel like I could go out and catch more fish on it than any other soft plastic swim bait in my boat because we aren't the first company to, to put out soft plastic swim baits. There's so many soft plastic swim baits on the market. They all have a place. They're all different. They're all unique. And so I wanted one that was the best possible bait for me. So out of the box, you know, we got three different sink rates of this hangover swim bait. It's six and a quarter inches long. And so I want you guys to tell us too, 
Um, if you would like a smaller version, a bigger version, I'm already thinking about coming out with a, a smaller version I think would be absolutely killer, but that's something down the line. Let's see how uh, you guys do on, on picking some of these guys up. But you know, we got slow, medium, and fast sync. This is the medium, it's about 2.7 ounces. The slow is 2.5 ounces, and the fast sync is about 2.9 ounces. So it's a nice, thick, hearty bait. Now, as you guys know, Six Sense is known for putting like a custom painted paint scheme on a production model bait that you can buy at a production price. And this bait's no different. One thing that's very important to me with these baits is the color schemes. You're fishing for the biggest fish in your body of water. You want it to look natural. You want it to look like the forage that they're eating, or sometimes you just want it to look like a different hue, something that they can't get too good of a look at because sometimes those big fish with those big quarter size bulging eyeballs sticking out, they see so well, they see so many baits that look too real sometimes. And I just wanted everything in between. So really the color schemes pushed the, the launch of this bait back so much because I wanted that to be perfect. Let me get this out of the box though for you guys. So when it comes to your house, this is the medium sink. This color is called Live Gizzard. Obviously it looks amazing. I'm just gonna take it. We can cut the bottom of this guy off right here. And if you look at it in the package, you can actually see there's kind of this indentation line. That's where the clamshell packaging is. So if you cut just right below the clamshell packaging, you're not gonna wreck anything. And you can actually just take your bait and just slide it out the bottom, just like so, like that. So you still have your packaging if you want it. Now I talked about this in a video the other day. The biggest thing really for the longevity of this bait is the integrity of the tail. You start to get it bent, whatever, the way you store it, that's gonna make the bait not run right. And especially this bait, it's a very touchy bait um, with how good that tail needs to be. Now, one thing is, and we can talk about it later maybe, but I'll bring it up right now. If your tail does get bent at any point, it's not a huge deal. You can't really fix it out on the water, but what you can do is when you get home, take a cup of water, boil it in the microwave, dunk that tail in it for like 15 seconds or so, lift it out, hang it, flat by its tail like that, or hang it perfectly straight up and down and it'll fix itself. If it's still a little bit kinked, repeat the process until it's straight. But anyways, this is cool. It's a little tiny feature that I love, and that is the way that we design this clamshell. Every other swim bait clamshell on the market that I've seen either has just a little tab that makes it shut that doesn't hold very well, or it's just nothing. It's just, it comes in a clamshell when you cut it out of the package like the, uh, the mag drafts do. Um, it, it just falls apart, and I still, with some of my swim baits, I'll show you. I'll try to keep them in the clamshell in the box because that tail integrity is so important. But this one comes with these little notches. So you can actually just, there you go. You just, you pop those shut and then boom, you guys have a swim bait that's gonna, whoops. And then you guys have a swim bait that's not gonna come out. So you can just keep that, that little clamshell and store it. I love that. Um, you can write the sink rate on it too. If you want to remember what the sink rate is, you can write it on there. You can write it between the fish's eyes or on its chin, whatever you want, slow, medium, fast, put one dash mark, two or three, whatever you want to do. But I'll take it out of here and show you this bait out of the package. Now, another thing that took forever was to get everything right with the swim. The action of this bait is even more important than the color scheme. You got the best color scheme bait um, that is a huge turd when it comes to action. I'm trying to find one over here that's just like, I don't want to throw any companies under the bus. I'm not gonna do that. But there's a lot of swim baits that look really good. You put them in the water and they just can't catch fish for an obvious reason or not for an obvious reason. But I haven't torn like any of them. Um, I had one out somewhere here, but you guys saw, I think, a picture of mine and Cole overlay the screen. I think I caught 150 plus pounds of bass on one bait in a couple days and it wasn't tearing at all, um, which was insane to me. Now there is a downside of that that when we go over to the pool, I'll tell you what that is and I'll tell you why we went with that material of plastic and what we've been through so many different plastic materials and densities and salt contents and, and everything. But there's characteristics of this bait that just took forever. The shape of the tail, as you guys notice, is kind of a weird hybrid pointed bottom tail. It's, it's tilted back, so it's not at that, that flat perpendicular angle of the bait like a lot of companies have. Uh, it doesn't have the, the width on the bottom of the tail. It's just a really unique shape. That along with the front of this bait being flat and the shoulders that come out, how they come out and where this, this bait tapers gives it such a unique action that I knew was very, very important for catching big bass and, and triggering them. And we'll talk about that when it's swimming in the pool, what that action is and 
you know, just give away trade secrets, Cole, of uh, how people can go make better swim baits, but that's good for everybody. Um, obviously, paint schemes are incredible. Uh, out of the package, it comes with the top hook design. This was something that's very important to me, was this top hook design. Basically, your line's gonna come through this top hook port. I don't know if there's another one on the market that has that straight nose to top hook port like this one. And man, that's a, a feature that I can't believe is not on like every line through or rigged swim bait on the market because when you rig it like this, I mean, think about all the different things that are, are better about this situation right here. First off, when you come up and, and come to any piece of cover or grass or just anything, you come up to it, the bait's gonna ride over the top of it, right? So, I mean, you're just, you're snagged immediately with the bottom hook, that's, that's all there is to it, you're snagged. Uh, second, I'm fishing for the biggest fish in the lake. They're looking at it from be beneath it, from behind it. Um, and to me, I mean, that's as concealed of a hook as you about can get. It's just, it, it hides that hook from those big fish. And um, yeah, I don't know what else to say about it. it it's just, I think that it, you get more bites with that hook up there. Uh, and third, one reason I like it up on the top is, for those of you guys that have seen how the fish eat this bait, a lot of the times their mouths look like, how do I make a big bass mouth, Cole? The dang mouths are like that and the bait is down there. You're getting them back in the crushers in the top of their mouth way in the back because they inhale this thing because they think it's alive. If that hooks on the bottom, you know where that's going. That's going right in the gill rakers. This, the, some of these bottom hook line throughs that catch fish really well have killed so many giant bass and tournament bass that uh, it sucks. But um, yeah, that's, that's why we, we did have it like that and that design with the top hook. I just can't imagine uh, a scenario where I would want it on the bottom instead. But for those of you guys that want to add a bottom hook, there is uh, on the harness, there's a little bottom guy. Now, obviously there's not a line through straight to the bottom. So if you wanna do that and you wanna only have the bottom hook, you can run, you know, you can put the line through and put a big split ring back here if you want to. And then it'll just, it won't be a line through basically. You'll just be pulling on the fish, which is fine. You still catch them like that. Or Cole and I actually had a situation like this where I had one on and of course I had like a five pounder on um, and it was lying through was up here because the, the five pounder was over here fighting and my bait's flailing around. And of course, as you guys know, fish are, are all, you know, the whole school can pull a lot of times following the fish that was eating the bait. And like a 12 pounders over here, boom, blasting this bait over here, eating it off the surface of the water while I'm fighting my five pounder. And my stupid butt doesn't have a dang hook on there. If I would have had a hook there, I would have caught the five and the 12 or however big it was. But if you guys get in that uh, the situation where there's a bunch of them, definitely a good way to double up on this bait right here. So just a, a little added feature. One last thing, the hook design on this. And, and I've had people messaging me and commenting like, what hook should I buy for it? What hook's good for that hangover? What should I go stock up on? What well, comes with a hook, guys? I, I've been kind of confused by that. But we went with this guy right here. It's the BKK Fang, a very premium hook. It's like, a, I wouldn't say it's the heaviest gauge wire. It's not a medium either. I'd say it's maybe like a 2X style bend. Um, and as you guys see, it's like an O'Shaughnessy bend too. I absolutely do not like EWG style hooks on a bait, a soft bait, and really most baits that are like this because the points point in on EWGs and you got so many fish that, you know, you, get, you just got a lot of plastic there in the mouth. You want as many opportunities for that, that hook point to be out away from the body, away from the plastic as possible to get hooked when they're slapping at it, when they're just eating the back half, whatever. And then the, uh, the O'Shaughnessy bend's really nice because it, it, it'll get them right in the corner. You hook fish, they stay on, they don't come off. So comes with a great hook. Um, if you guys wanna get a replacement, it's the BKK Fang. Um, if you want a round bend hook, the Owner ST36 one aught size is very good. And when we go out to the pool, I wanna show you guys uh, a sneaky rigging method too, that you're gonna want an even smaller hook, like a size two hook. We'll show you in a second though. But that's this bait, that's the properties of this bait. And, and I wanna show you guys a lot of these baits that inspired me in the past that um, I used, I caught a ton of fish on, I got a ton of respect for these companies, but they all to me had their downsides and that's why I wanted to design my own that I felt like took care of a lot of those. So the biggest one for me really is the sink rate issue with the line through or even the harness style swim bait. There's so many of these swim baits on the market that they just wanna ride up, they wanna pull up. And even this slow sink model of this hangover 
likes to ride nice and level and horizontal in the water. It's not going to nose up if you, you reel it fast at all. Um, it's just a bait that, especially the medium and the slow or the fast sink versions, they ride down in the water column extremely well. I, by nature, am an offshore structure fisherman. I love grinding a crankbait in eight to 20 feet of water. There's just so many different um, benefits of being able to fish a big bait like this down in the water column, um, more so than just forward facing sonar, which this has also been the, the catchiest bait on forward facing sonar of 10 plus pound fish that I've ever used in my life. So some of these other baits that I started with and I got inspiration with, man, Cole, like what are we going to even talk? Let's look at these freaking soft baits here. We got just a stupid amount of different soft baits. Here's one right here actually that was a, a good one for me. It's a rigged bait, internally rigged. That's the six inch Osprey. Um, just a, a really nice shape for me fishing up in the north uh, because a lot of the bait fish were that size, bluegill, bass, and one that was sneaky for me that I actually, the, the first time I ever won a tournament on a swim bait was when I was fishing along and I wasn't having a good day with my traditional methods. And I notice there's some bullheads dead on the surface of the lake. Now this might sound crazy, and a lot of people know big bass love bullheads, but I noticed some dead bullheads on the surface of the lake. And then I started noticing like there's some just kind of twiddling around, you know, whatever. And I was like, what can I, th like there's bullheads dying, let's try to mimic that. And so I pull out this bait right here, this six inch Huddleston, which God, look how destroyed it is um, with my terrible wire rigging system. I don't think it was this exact one. I had like 10 of these because I would lose them like crazy and I'd catch so many fish on them. But I pull out this little Huddleston six inch and that thing looks a lot like, you know, like a yellow bullhead like we got up there in Iowa and Nebraska. And I even got a little gill mod on it and stuff. And I, I couldn't believe, like I caught probably 15 fish on this bait that day in you know, two to eight feet of water, just fishing it around man-made jetties, fishing it on just banks with wind blown on them, whatever. They would destroy this thing. They had never seen a big bait. This was a huge bait back then um, for me. And it made total sense. And a bell went off my head immediately. I had been throwing these bigger baits, hadn't had tournament success. I'd caught a fish here and there, but I was like, I have no money. I have terrible equipment. I had you know, a handful of rods that weren't great for it. I lost some giant fish on this exact bait because I didn't have the right rods. I was throwing on a flipping stick that was probably a 7.3 or something. And I, I was fishing these tournaments with no good electronics. My engine was like 50-50 if it would start or not. So a lot of times I was fishing just the launch cove on my trolling motor the whole tournament because I didn't know if it was going to start when I got there. And I didn't care. I just wanted to fish tournament and I wanted to compete. I figured this out though, that I wasn't going to be the guy that went out and could scan. I had a job. I wasn't going to be able to scan for days. I didn't have good equipment to scan with to find these fish. And so I needed an ace in the hole that would catch bigger than average bass for me. And so that's where the soft plastic swim bait came into play. This thing could catch bigger fish without having to have the crazy expensive equipment. That was the start of me fishing big baits, which back then was five, six inches. Now you've seen some of the stupid crap that I throw. It's ridiculous. But, you know, this Huddleston six inch, great bait, um, comes with the top hook. I like to snip it off and I put this little stinger back here. Only comes in a couple different sink rates that, um, I don't know, it's, it's a really good bait, but it's a wedge tail. So it's a very, very natural swimming bait. It doesn't have a big kick, doesn't have a lot of draw power because of that sometimes. Um, this Osprey, as you can see, Good size and everything, but the hook that comes with it is a piece of crap. It's not, it, uh, it's too hard of plastic. It's only at one sink rate, but still, man, I caught so many good fish on that. It was freaking badass. I loved it. Man, some of the old swim baits, the, the old line throughs I had, I don't even have anymore because um, here's one feature that I also didn't talk about with this hangover that was important to us. And I'll show you why in a second, but if you guys notice, I better take it out, Cole. I had to get the see-through version so you guys could tell. There is lead weight inside of there and it's coated with plastic. That's very, very important and a very important feature of this bait being coated with plastic because if it's not coated with plastic and you put any type of copper or lead or whatever in there, this was a white with a little bit of yellow bait. It, it discolors and destroys those baits. And I had so many of those line throughs that um, just got wrecked over time. Let me try to find another dang 
line through that's destroyed. I got more of those babes that are destroyed. Um, but yeah, you guys get it. If you guys have had any of these old line throughs that came with like that copper line through insert, like the baby E. God, it was a good bait. There was some giant fish. We went and fished with Ike. Ike had a whole, here's a rigged babe right there. That's what happens though without a coated weight. Uh, Ike had a whole uh, box full of baby E line through swim baits, like little four inch guys. Man, those were awesome baits that I used to have. I used to catch white bass on them and crap growing up. But yeah, that's what happens to the baits. Um, this was a see-through bait if you don't have that coated weight in there. So that was important to me. But yeah, man, God, we just, there's so many different, these huddle stins, and now we got these these burrito shads, which which I think are good baits too. I think they, uh, I, I don't like that they don't come in more sink rates. I don't think they're very natural. I don't like that they're top hook and they don't rig very well, but that fit, that bait will freaking catch them. I got old freaking Berkeley baits in here. I got, you know, some of these awesome, these newer um, Baitsmith hitch style baits in here. And, and I mean, growing up as a, a tournament fan, you know, this was the one right here. I used to have a bunch of these, but they'd break off and stuff. This, this Jerry Rago um, Byron Velvic line through right here was awesome. As you can see, it comes with a crappy small hook that I'm sure someone would like, but it's already, look, it's brand new in package. I, I just got this out and it's already discoloring because it's not coated. And this bait um, doesn't sink very fast. It only fishes up in the water column or a super slow wind if you want to keep it down there five feet. So awesome bait, caught fish, but it was one that really just, I thought could be improved. And then this, this Osprey, you know, Ospreys have been really the bait that I think a lot of line throughs over the years have been modeled after because they were so effective. Here's the hook that the Osprey comes with, by the way. You want to throw that for a 10 pounder? <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, I don't even know if the, the Walmart Eagle Claw hooks are that terrible that are like a dollar for a 10 pack and made for catfishing or something. Anyways, <laughs> uh, this is the heavyweight version of the Osprey, as you can see, already discoloring, it's not coated. And um, yeah, just a great bait that's caught a lot of fish for a lot of people. Still, even they, they have a regular, they have a heavyweight, not one that gets down or rides down in the water calm enough for me. It only comes in the bottom hook version. So, I mean, we got all these different baits. Um, I still love to throw, I got this whole bait, this box here that I, I keep in the boat sometimes. Show some people some stuff they probably shouldn't see. But um, this guy, the Skinny Bear swim bait is badass. It's a lot like that Babe swim bait, which is a knockoff or I guess a remake of the Bass Pro Shops XPS swimmer that you guys saw Takahiro Mori um, one on Wheeler Lake with. There was a very special bait because it had an action like we're gonna talk about in the pool with this head quiver action, it does that in the water. And um, I guess something about that is like one of the number one triggering mechanisms for a bass to know that a fish is uh, in distress or trying to get away from them or something, but that's the most important action. Anyways, um, that was a rigged bait. Bass Pro Shops discontinued it 15 years ago, I think, and most of them ran like shit. So they've been some remakes in the market. Um, harnessed ones, this is was a, a raw one that I put the little line through harness in. Um, I make a lot of line throughs myself. This is the skinny bear version. Very good bait. Again, uh, it's that same exact style bait almost. It's like a knockoff, rip off of it kind of, even though it doesn't exist anymore. It's not really a knockoff. Uh, has that same good head wobble, but only fishes at one speed right below the surface, down to five feet maybe. You can't fish this down in the water column, but. Uh, a good one I like to have. Here's some of the, the mega bass stuff that I was, I was talking about. Some of these mag drafts. I, I keep mag drafts in the boat all the time. Um, for you guys that love the, ma the mag drafts, I'd strongly recommend trying out that, uh, that slow sink version. Again, this has become like the most popular swim bait that I'm sure everyone thinks that these baits are all knockoffs of, even though most of these baits came out well before the mag draft. Um, but as far as a harness swim bait goes, very good bait. It's a very... Um, um, inconsistent bait. As you guys can see, I have to add, add nail weights in most of my mag drafts to get them to run right. Um, and then, like I said before, bottom hook bait, don't like that. I'd much rather it be a top hook bait. You undo the split ring down there and you put on the top and you ride that hook on the top of the bait. It's great that you have a top hook, but then since there's weight on the top, it wants to ride and roll over on its side. So you got a, more nail weights. Regardless, you end up with a bait that's extremely difficult unless you're just like going to wait for three minutes for it to get down there every cast. Um, a very difficult bait that wants to ride up in the water column, probably because of that 
harness being up there. And it's a harness bait. So that bass is going to have the weight of this whole guy flying in around trying to uh, toss it. So very good bait, as you guys know, but uh, definitely has some major downfalls. Again, here's my clamshell that I try to keep a lot of these mag drafts in. And I will continue to keep them in my boat at times um, just because they, they catch fish up shallow sometimes. Um, but man, I mean, you, you end up, you putting it in there and you're crossing your fingers. It stays in there and it's like, <sighs> got to tuck all my little baits in so they don't get killed. Yeah, I don't know how many more inspirations we're going to talk about that are really in here. You know, we got some of these shad baits that are lying throughs. We got some of these savage gear baits that are lying throughs that come with a bottom and a top hook port, which you guys know I like that. Again, this is a, uh, a wedge tail type. Uh, doesn't come in very many sink rates. Can be a good bait at times. You got some of these Nate's baits. They look cool, but I can't get bit on them very good. Uh, and then you got the 316 bait. You guys have seen me throw the rising sun bait a lot, um, caught a lot of good fish on that as well. Had one that was out I wanted to show. This happens with those um, if you catch a couple fish on them generally. So I've had issues with tearing and comes in two sink rates, really high up in the water column and then one that rides kind of more like our moderate sink one. So uh, I also feel like I get more bites on a bait around the country that's um, quite a bit smaller um, an inch or so smaller than that rising sun in the uh, hangover. Definitely keep these in the, bait, the boat though still for some time. Um, swims good at a really slow retrieve rate, so it does have its benefits at times. But yeah, um, God, I, I don't think you guys need to see any more of my soft plastic swim baits. You get the idea. I'm freaking ate up with them. Those are some of my inspirations, but those were some of the things that, you know, I drew from that I wanted to be different, you know, and a lot of people think that a soft plastic swim bait's a soft plastic swim baits when in reality you have rigged ones, you have unrigged, you have top hook with harnesses in them. You have line through swim baits, line through top hook, line through with, um, with a boot tail, line through with a wedge style tail. You got everything on the market, and I took all of that with me to uh, design this guy the best we could right here. Let's go swim it in the pool, and then I'm going to talk about uh, rod, reel, and line. You throw it on in the pool as well, and then I'll let you guys just get back to buying them. All right, here we are at the pool situation. I rigged one of these guys up. We're going to start with the fast sink. I just want to show you guys the, the swim on this guy. Basically, you're going to take your, uh, your line, and, and you don't want this split ring you know pinned into the, the line through port there so i would just look and see the first time you do it here where the bend of that hook is going to go into the body of the swim bait and then we'll just go back like an eighth of an inch from right there we'll spear it you know straight down as straight down as it can and you're going to end up with that you want that uh that top hook to ride and this is a, a feature that i didn't really talk about that is just basic to me at this point that i really like and that is that we split that top fin. Um, a lot of these swim baits where I, I rig it, like the Huddleston, uh, I always rig it back and I like to have that hook on the back right about past the halfway point on that bait. You have to put it, the, uh, the rigging, the harness to the side of the, the dorsal fin and that can cause the, the bait to want to roll or go to one direction or not. But that's uh, one feature that I made sure we added. We're adding that to some other baits in six cents too. Rod reel line. This is the only rod, uh, reel, and line that I throw this bait on anymore, and that is the 7.7 Heavy MF rod. And I'm pretty positive we have a whole bunch of these in stock. So, again, this is a cheap rod. It's a $120, $129 rod, MF10 discount, gets it really cheap. It's got the perfect bend to retrieve, to get a hook in the fish, to, to fire this bait like 140 feet. It casts like a damn rocket. There is no condition where you can't throw this thing. It's the best casting swim bait that you can have. And you don't really have to have a specialized big swim bait rod. This rod also doubles as my big spoon rod. I flip with this rod a bunch. I just love it. I throw it for so many different things. Six speed gear ratio reel. Again, I'm winding this thing. Uh, unless I'm fishing the slow sink up really, really shallow, I am winding this thing um, low in the water column. And a seven speed reel will do it, will be fine, but I like that six speed. Big crank, 200 size crankbait reel. You don't need to go buy a Tranks. You don't need to buy a damn Daiwa to two or 300. You don't need to go buy these nice 
over the top swim bait reels to throw this bait. This bait is not big enough for that, does not need that. You just need a decent gear ratio reel like this uh, Tatula, this Daiwa Tatula, um, or like a Corrado, something like that. Corrado 300 might be good. I don't know, I, have, I only throw it on this, this Daiwa reel though. And then 25 pound fluorocarbon. This is gamma fluorocarbon, doesn't stretch very much. It's the best, strongest fluorocarbon that I know of. You can bump it down to 20 sometimes if you're really trying to get more action out of it, I guess, but I don't, I don't see a reason for that. 25 pound, let's throw it in the pool. I'll talk about that action that you need to have. So we're gonna start off with the fast sink version. And a lot of people are asking me in the comments and all these videos, what is the best one? What's the best sink rate that I need for my fishing? You use the, the slow sink for shallow water, the medium for medium depths, and the fast sink for deep water. Actually, that's not the case. I like to let the uh, how the fish are acting really dictate that. And with forward facing sonar, I can see that a lot of times where uh, a, the slow sink version is the best one to throw even down in 15 or 20 feet of water because they want that bait, you know, really stalling coming through that water column. And then there's also times where I'm fishing hard shallow cover, you know, a, a shell bed and five feet of water or less, a, a rock pile where I wanna throw the fast sink version and really make contact with the bottom because it's muddier water, because it's something like a crankbait bite. And I just wanna get that bottom contact, which can really draw fish into biting. So there is no right answer there. But the one thing that I want you guys to notice as we throw these three different sink rates is the fast sink version that I tied on here is the easiest for anyone to go out throw it out there and wind it in. Because of the amount of weight that's in the front section of this bait, I'll show you the action. It's gonna be the easiest to, to get the proper action out of this thing. So let me fire it up here a couple times to coleslaw. Watch this thing sink though. It, it falls dumb, it kind of spirals. And I'd say the sink rate on this thing is probably like about two, I'd say the sink rate on this thing is probably like two feet per second or so. It's a fast sinking bait. Basically you can fish this thing at the biggest variety um, of retrieve speeds as possible and the action of this bait that really I think makes fish and, and big fish react to it is that same action we we're talking about with that BPS swim bait and that is the nose of this bait has all that quiver. The whole bait kind of swings around um, and, and really flows and moves as you retrieve it. It's not just all the action in the tail and then the head still, it's not all the action in the head, but it's not really a, it's an over, overly big action, um, unnatural action of the tail, because yeah, it's good to have a bait that's, you know, that's, that's kicking really wide to get the fish's attention in the, in the water column, but shad and bluegill and, and crappie and whatever the bass are, their tail doesn't go like that in the water column. You know, it's a nice tighter swimming action and their whole body kind of shimmers and rocks um, as they are, you know, especially swimming away from a predator. And so, you know, this, this fast sink version, I'll fire it out there over the top of anything, um, over the top of a point. I mean, anywhere you're gonna drag a, a jig, anywhere you're gonna drag a Carolina rig, anywhere you're gonna throw a deep diving crankbait, a medium diving crankbait, um, or any type of, of cover where they can really ambush up over the top of a brush pile, fire it out there, count it down a couple feet per second. So, I mean, if a, if a brush pile tops out at 10 feet, count it down for four to five seconds and wind it over the top of it. It's just a hard bait to not catch a good fish on, to be completely honest. Okay, so here's the medium sink. We're gonna do the medium sink and then the slow sink. And a lot of you guys are going to pick this up out of the box and you are gonna wind this at the wrong speed and you're gonna say, something's messed up with my bait. It's just wobbling side to side, it looks stupid. But that's actually something that is just kind of something you gotta live with with this bait. Because like I was saying again, with the, the, the density, the hardness of the plastic, the way the tail's designed, the way the front of this bait's designed, I know the most important thing for this bait to get bit is that quivering head action, that oscillating, that little roll that it has. And to maintain that while keeping the exact same you know, style, the same shape, the same mold of the bait, um, you're gonna give up a little bit of the ability to wind at a lot of different speeds as you put less and less weight up here in the head. And that's probably why most companies haven't come out with, you know, a lot of different sink rates of a weighted swim bait and why it took us so long to get this right. But I'll show you what I'm talking about with this bait right here. And it's really pronounced with the slow sink. Um, the medium sink rate is really one that I throw um, in a lot of different situations. But there, that's, that's the bait right there. That's the action I wanna show you guys. If you're reeling this bait too slow, you're gonna pull it out, you're gonna, 
you know, if you're bank fisherman, you're going to put it in front of the bank, you're going to put it next to the boat and be like, I got a dud. Something's wrong with this thing. What the heck did I just waste my money on? Well, don't worry, guys. That's, uh, that's normal. So here's what it looks like when you actually pick up the speed and, and reel it at that, uh, that, that retrieve rate that really brings out the best action in this bait. So the, the medium and the slow have more pronounced head shake and head wiggle because there's less weight up there. So there's not as much mass up there to keep that head from shaking. And again, they're, they're not super user friendly in the retrieve speed because if you pull it too slow, it will just do that weird rolling crap. But I would just suggest, you know, throw it out like I'm doing right now, you know, 30 feet from the boat, 30 feet from the bank, watch it a foot below the surface, get an idea of that, that retrieve speed on your reel um, as to, you know, what, what you need to pull it at. Again, this, this uh, medium sink sinks probably a little bit over a foot per second, probably one and a quarter to not probably one and a half, probably about one to one and a quarter feet per second. So it would be um, our rate of fall, as a lot of people know, which is how many feet it sinks in 10 seconds. It would be about that rate of fall 10 or so. Um, and to me, I mean, it's, it's really easy, especially I, I always throw this again on the six speed reel. So I know how fast I need to turn my handle to maintain this perfect little retrieve action. And you'll see in the slow sink in a second, it really does it, but the medium sink, I mean, it really has a cool kind of wandering um, effect to where if you're pulling it kind of on that, the brink of having it do the crappy roll action that's not how you want it and the right action, if you get it right in between there, the bait will kind of swim around and wander its way through. And I don't know if that's something that makes them bite, but I don't see why it wouldn't be. Another thing you're gonna notice is, for those of you guys that like to throw a lot of big baits, that throw a lot of um, glide baits, um, just bigger hard baits, stuff like that, you're not gonna have fish follow this bait all the way to the boat, hardly ever. Um, they're either gonna drift off you know, 15, 20 feet from the boat if they're following it, or they're gonna inhale this bait. There's not much in between. Sometimes they're a little finicky and they wanna just bite the tail of this bait. They, they wanna feel it because they don't have hands. You know, bass are curious. And I'm gonna show you guys a hack to uh, catch those fish that are doing that in just a second. So let's swim the slow sink. I'll show you guys this slow sink model. Okay, last but not least, we got the slow sink version. This to me um, is maybe my favorite one because it has more of that head shake, more of that wandering side to side, swimming, searching action than any. Um, and like I said, you gotta take the bad with the good where it's gonna have to be reeled at more of that right speed to make it really work. Just like we talked about with that Babe swim bait, um, with that Skinny Bear swim bait, with the original Bass Pro swim bait that made it like the most deadly bait that you can never even get anymore. But the head shake on this because of the less mass in the head is absolutely ridiculous. I'll show you again. So let me flip out to coleslaw here. And you guys see it sinking. Um, I'd say it's less than a foot per second. And again, I'll reel it too slow. So there you go, you got that action that's, uh, you're thinking that you got a bait that's a damn dud. And then let me show you guys as I fire it out to them this time, when we get that action just right. And this might be one that you kinda gotta film looking straight at it like I am cold to really see how pronounced that head wiggle is. It's like that babes, like that Bass Pro Swimmer. It's like the mag draft. When you get a perfect mag draft or get a mag draft weighted perfectly, um, man, it looks freaking good. That should be a good one, Cole. That's just a bait that's just, that's a magical thing. I got goosebumps right now watching this bait come through the water. I, there's something about when a bait swims right that I'm sure if you guys are, you know, crankbait junkies or, or, uh, hard bait, hard, hard swim bait, glide bait junkies that really know the right action that when you get something that's just right, it's very exciting. You can throw it one time in a pool or one time in the lake and you don't even got to see it hardly swim to know that this one is the one in your box. And that's, uh, that's as good as it gets right there, guys. Let me show you guys a really quick little modification you can do on this bait too. For days when 
for some reason, some days they want, you can feel, if you're watching them on live scope, they'll follow it and they just, they don't ever close the gap like when they kill it. They're just like stuck right on the back of it. They're not closing, they're not fading. And you'll just feel a little mush. Every, like you'll feel the, the tail stop kicking because they're bumping the tail or they're just grabbing, you know, this back half of the bait and just not getting hooked. This is a cool little modification. You'll just take some of these six cents peg stoppers and just a, a smaller, like a size two treble hook right here and we'll run it through just like we always do the reason you want to have the peg stoppers i'll put two on here because they're going to be hidden anyways but i'll show you why we do peg stoppers and not just run the hook back there so if you ride a hook back too far on this bait we're going to ride this hook back further usually i'll stab it in so it's riding like about that right we're going to stab it all the way back here for when they're being dickheads and you, you can really go even smaller on this hook you can go to like a you know a size a size one or size uh four or something like that just so it's a little bit more um hidden but and they're being finicky but when you when you ride this line through like this if you have it like that when you pull on it or cast or whatever it's going to do that with the bait so that's why i ride these peg stoppers you have to get it just just the right spot depending on where you're going to spear that hook now i'm trying to do it without getting hooked but you can do it like that and so it's the weight then goes on the peg stoppers and it doesn't doesn't uh banana that bait up like that so you get the same action you get the same you know awesome fish landing capabilities of it being a line through still but you know peg stoppers are hidden in the fin there just like we like them and if you have any issues with fish just nipping at the tail, which it's rare, but there's days when the, they do like to do that, that's what I'll do. You still get the good swimming actions. What, Cole? You should have kept that one to yourself. I know, I should have. <laughs> I had to give him something. Anyways, guys, I'd love if you go pick this bait up. Use code MF10, save you some money. We want it to be affordable. We want it to be the best bait possible so you guys can go catch the biggest fish of your life. So you can catch fish like I catch in my videos. It's not a one bait fix all. It's not a magic bait, but it is the best of what I ever envisioned a bait could be when it comes to the weighting, the size, the colors, the action, everything with this bait, even the storage of that clamshell. It's very, very special. So I think we had like 25,000 um, on the site today and we have another probably just as many going out to dealers around the country so if you have a six cents dealer around the country if you're going to go out to the store today um, go to your mom and pop or you usually get your six cents crankbaits whatever it's a very good chance they have those in stock there so support those local small businesses just as well i'd love if you guys did that and um yeah awesome bait gonna help you guys catch more fish and thank you for uh thank you for supporting and, and watching now go catch some giant fish on it Send me a picture on Facebook or Instagram. I'll, I'll repost anyone that, that's catching these giant fish on this bait right here. Comment what colors you pick up down below. I'll probably, you know, also I'll repost your, uh, your order from these two. I want to see how many of these you guys pick up and who's picking them up. But yeah, thanks for watching this, guys. It means a lot to me that um, you support any way you can. If you don't pick up one of these, totally cool too. I know that's too much money for a lot of people, but... Like I said, again, this bait does a lot of things that have replaced a lot of different baits in my box. So it helps me save some money and not have to, you know, go spend those thousands of dollars I have sitting out there in those boxes from old baits that weren't very good when I can just go get one. All right, I'm out of here. We'll catch you soon. Peace.